Um, man, what a, uh, a ton of love and respect for UCF. Um, uh, you know, they're coming off a, a massive win uh, a couple of days ago and and uh, certainly expended a ton of energy and then came out here and, and battled like crazy tonight. Um, and, and they're a problem in this league, as they've already proven, which is super exciting. Uh, and then Johnny Dawkins, I think, is, you know, he's one of my heroes in, in college basketball coaching right now. I have so much love and respect for him. I think he's a, a great coach. Um, and I think he's an even better person. And so, uh, and then the venue tonight was incredible. So, um, props to UCF because it, it was, uh, was a special gym to play in. It was super fun. And maybe some of those feelings come from the fact that we pulled out a win, but I think a lot of that is just legit. Uh, I'm proud of our guys for fighting. Um, it's, it's just like a slug fest, like we kind of anticipated, expected coming in, and, and that we came with a win. We're super proud of that. Go just kind of talk about how you guys were able to hang on at the end. UCF made a furious run, had opportunities yeah. to maybe tie or take the lead, but you guys really buckled down. Yeah, um, as you credit to UCF, uh, their defensive pressure was was outstanding, and then they're just swallowed up the, the offensive glass. Um, they were really diligent about kind of putting heads down and doing whatever it took to get to the rim. And and uh, you know, in the waning moments of a game, especially a game that feels like that, and a gym feels like that, that's hotly contested um, on both sides of the ball. Their aggression was was hard for us to handle, um, and and we just had just enough uh, just enough guys came and made plays. Uh, you know. Um, uh, Richie Saunders was great for us, trying to handle and attack the pressure a little bit. Uh, Ali Khalifa came up with a huge, uh, huge rebound late. Trevin Nell came up with a uncontested but important because he was a body in there rebound, and and uh, we just kind of uh, found a way to patchwork it together. Coach, you hold the Knights to 29% shooting. What was so effective for your defense? Uh, well, I think I think part of it was. Uh, you know, part of it was their success at the free throw line, right? They they really you know they shot 33 free throws, and 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 so I think part of it was the pull to that. Like when you're having that much success, you want to keep going. Um, and then I th I thought our guys did a pretty good job about um, having the guys that we wanted shooting the ball shoot the ball, and then and then also the guys that we didn't want shooting the ball really having some extended pressure and trying to make those shots really difficult. And and then sometimes you get fortunate too. And on our side, it was a little bit fortunate also. Coach, Mark, just the, the relief of, of getting that first Big 12 win, what does it mean for the team? Just cut the confidence now moving forward, getting that first one. Um, I, I think we're uh, – man, we got to get Ali a chair. I don't know if he's going to be able to stand up here for this press conference. Maybe we could just do it right over there, Ali. How many minutes did you play, bro? Ali Khalifa, 26. Um, sorry, the question was – oh, relief of a first win. Um yeah, I, I mean, you just uh, – this league is special. It's just like nothing else, right? Um, I'll be honest, and, and, man, I hope this doesn't hurt feelings or, or make people mad at me, but, you know, kind of as we previewed the league – this year, one of the things we thought was like this UCF venue was not going to be like over the top electric. It's probably maybe the best gym we've played in so far. Uh, it's incredible, and it's just a tribute to the league. And so, in terms of relief, I don't know if we have relief. I think we're just we're just hungry to just go find a way to win a game, and, cool. and now we're hungry to go try and find a, a way to win another one. Coach, you held the Knights to 29% shooting, but they were able to stick in the game until very late. What does that show about their defense and their group? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it comes from, like I said, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm just such a huge Johnny Dawkins fan from the time he was a player to being a Hall of Famer and, and then being a coach and what he's done as a coach. Um, but, you know, I think it comes from him and, and, and these kids clearly are, have no interest in doing anything but fighting and fighting and fighting and competing. And, and, and um, you know, they just took a great Kansas team and, and, and sent them home with a, with a negative result. And that's just their guts, man. They got big time guts. And it's a, it's a you know, they, they, they clearly have some, some huge character on the team. Coach, your claim, you guys' claim to fame this season has been your three point shooting. Almost like, no, half of your shots attempts came from beyond the arc and went nine, nine of 20, 26. Why has the three point shooting kind of become a centerpiece for you guys' game? Well, it just fits us. Um, we, we really believe in our guys. You know, we're trying to fit, fit the game to our guys a little bit. And, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, credit to UCF that we only got 26. You know, our goal is to be way closer to 35, and, and that's a real credit to their defense. It's a real credit to their pressure. And um, it's, it's, it's one of our strengths, one of the things we can do really well, one of the things that we think can be a little bit of an equalizer in the game for us, and so it's something we, we work hard on. And, and uh, UCF defended the three-point line great tonight. Mark, uh 
you haven't been able to close out the first two Big 12 games. This one you did. It wasn't pretty, but you did. What, what can that do for you guys moving forward, do you think? I would have to disagree with you. I thought it was actually beautiful. I think um, that's what you look for in a big-time college basketball game is two, two teams just spewing their heart out on the floor. I actually think it's the most beautiful ending. Um, you know, we didn't jump in this league to have, uh, you know, just easy victories. I think that these ones you compete for are really awesome, and, and I love walking out of a game. Clearly, like I said, I feel some of this emotion because we won, but – um, either side of the ball, you feel like, man, how fun is it to witness a game where two teams are just like their whole heart and soul is on the floor. Um, uh, and, and I want to get to your question, but I forgot it. I got so passionate about that. Tell me. Just what can it do for you moving forward? Oh, um, well, I don't know. Like, you know, we have Iowa State at home in <laughs> 72 hours um, who just, you know, just took down the number one team in the country. And so I, I think, uh, you know, hopefully it'll continue to contribute to our belief. Hopefully, you know, every single game in this league, you kind of get to go learn a little bit more about what you can do. Like we had some different guys in different positions late in this game because we're learning about our guys in different scenarios. And so hopefully we'll learn a bit, a little bit of that. And certainly like getting a game in the, in the left column is, is really important to us just in terms of like, you know, finding a way to exist in this league, you know, it's ultimately about stealing the win. So I think, you know, both those things we'll be really excited about capitalizing on. Yeah, we're super fortunate. And like I said, it's a credit to UCF. It's uh, clearly they can guard. I mean, they've guarded the best in this league. And, um, and uh, you know, they made it really, really difficult for us down the stretch. And, and that's what, uh, you know, big time defensive teams do. They're a top 25 defensive team. And, and they, they really amped it up in the, in the last, you know, several minutes. And it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a hallmark of their team also. And they're going to lean on it a lot. So um, a lot of credit to them, and, and I'm super excited about our guys about battling through it to get a win. Mark, how valuable uh, have the contributions been? I know, you, I know you brought him up. Richie Saunders. Yeah. Yeah, he's, um, you know, Richie's got this, uh, he's got a little bit of physicality to his game. He's got a little bit of fearless to his game. He's, he's probably our most explosive cutter through contact and through grabbing and holding. And, and, um, and all those things are really important to us. Tonight, we got him a few minutes at the three, which is going to be really important for us moving forward just because there's some things he can bring to us at the three that help us with our lineup. And I thought he was terrific tonight. I thought he was, you know, I, I haven't even looked at his numbers, but his impact on the game that didn't show up on the stat sheet is is more impressive to me than even the numbers that showed up on the stat sheet. Co Coach, you uh, guys managed to score 12 points off of second chance attempts. Talk about this team's ability to capitalize on your opponent's mistakes like that. Yeah, um, you know, our offensive rebounding numbers were, you know, were, were not where we wanted to be. We only had six offensive rebounds. And, and um, you know, that's been a hallmark of our team. That's been, seemed like it's been a little bit heavier lifting in the Big 12, which is not surprising. Um, but, but though, you know, every, every, every way we can find a score a bucket is really important. And so hopefully we can keep growing in that area. You mentioned you mentioned it wasn't quite the three point shooting game you wanted as far as attempts, but how how important was it to get some to go down in that in that second half to build that? Yeah, it's really important. You know, um, I thought Ollie was terrific. You know, he was fearless from the three point line. He's been telling me that he should be getting ten threes a game, right? So he was he was an inch a little bit closer that tonight. Uh, but his ability to to you know, I don't know if I've had a player. I'm going to brag about Ollie for a little bit. I don't know if I've had a player that. Uh, expands the floor. You know, we talk all the time about, you know, we have to find a way with the team we are, with the skills we have, we have to make a way to force teams to, to guard 27 feet by 50 feet. Most, in our estimation, most teams probably make you guard, you know, 18 by 48 feet. And so we're trying to get 27 by 50. And I've never had a player that expands the floor as much as Ali at the five, being so dangerous, shooting from the three point line adding what we believe is another 30% of the game to our offense. Um, he's super dangerous. And, and so, you know, I thought he was important tonight. And, and this three-point line is really important to us. And so we, we just got to keep finding ways to, to, um, to be aggressive from there. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you all. Mike, it didn't look like Coach was doused with water or anything. I mean, we celebrated Coach's 100th win, obviously. We gave him a jersey. Uh, it was great just to get the first win, obviously, in the Big 12. And we were just thirsty. We were ready to play Iowa State already. So it was it was fun in the locker room after, but we're looking forward to playing on Tuesday. How big of a relief is it for this team to, to finally get that first breakthrough win here in the Big 12? Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. Just get that first win in the Big 12. What does it mean for this group? It feels great. Obviously, just 
we were so close the past two games and just to see uh, TS win this this game on the road and the very tough environment against a really good team it just feels feels great feel like we belong in this conference the best conference in the world and we can get a lot of wins in this conference as well it just it just feels awesome you guys were leading by 13 I think with a little bit over seven minutes to play UCF made a furious comeback what was your kind of takeaway from that time period and what you were able to do to, to, to finally pull it out I feel like uh, they pressured us a little bit they got on offensive glass a lot and that's why the game got closer, but we didn't stop believing. Every time we were in the huddle and every time we were in a timeout, we would emphasize what we need to do, next play mentality, and that's why we got the win, because we focus on the next play every time, even if they were getting closer, but um, they never took the lead. So I think that shows a lot about us and about our commitment to the defensive side of the game and to get stops. How physical was this game going up against Diallo and our bigs? It was really physical. He's a big dude, obviously, all of them. and. Um, yeah, I think he's the biggest dude I've played in this conference already, and we all have played in this conference, and it was it was it was huge. But we were ready for the challenge. That's why we got the win. How difficult did UCF's defense make the night for you guys? Yeah, it, it made it hard just to be able to see cutters. Um, for me uh, personally, just his pressure. Diallo is a big dude, and he was just all over me on the perimeter. And for the cutter, they were grabbing and holding and stuff like that. Um, it obviously, made it hard on the offensive side of the game. Um, but our defense was really good. That's why we got the win. So, what did you think of the uh, fan and the crowd atmosphere tonight? It was great. I love playing in this environment. So uh, I like when the fans start talking crap to you a little bit when you're on the bench and uh, and the start of the game. But it was it was great. They had they had a lot of fans show up today. Obviously because they just beat Kansas on Tuesday. But it was it was a great environment to play in. You've been known as a facilitator with this team to this point of the year, but was it by design to be more on the attack and get a little more aggressive with your shot tonight? No, I feel like I, I always play a simple game. Um, normally, I wasn't left that wide open in other games, so I was just facilitating. And today, it was just I was open. That's why I took the shots. Um, I feel like they were guarding the guards really good because our guards are really good. They were guarding them so heavily, and Diallo was getting sucked in every time, and I feel like that's why I was be able to get wide open shots, I wouldn't turn threes, obviously. And yeah, that's why. So. Ollie, not, not many people had you driving down the lane and jamming one on their bingo card. That was, How uh, did that feel? And what did your teammates say about that? It felt great. They, nobody expected that, obviously. <laughs> nobody in the whole world, I guess, expected that. But it was a great play. Coach told me to have some energy. I just uh, subbed back in. And in my head, I was like, he's going to fall for it. And I would go try and dunk it. And it was a perfect opportunity. It feels great, obviously. And um, yeah, Just many. Full disclosure: Yeah, more, many more to come. You know, <laughs> it was great. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. All right, CJ. After you know, I think BYU was leading by 13 or say with seven minutes left. You guys really buckled down defensively. Made a run, had opportunities to maybe tie or take the lead. Obviously, didn't pull it out. Just kind of, what are the emotions after kind of going through a game game like this? Um, you know, losing is always a bummer, um, especially coming off a big win like that with all the momentum we had. Uh, it's just really disappointing um, to beat you know Kansas and then come back and lose. But you know, our coaches been doing a good job telling us you know this is a good team, which they are, and they came out ready to play. And like you said, we had a lot of chances. Um, we was down 16 against uh, Kansas and came back from that. So, you know, I feel like that's why the game was so close at the end. We didn't give up. So, but it, it is a bummer to lose, of course. Why the struggles offensively tonight, shooting just 29%? Um, I don't know. You know, that's why defense is so important because sometimes you just have games like that, you know? So, um, I can't really comment too much on why. I, that's something that when we watch film, We'll, you know, dissect that problem. But as of right now, um, we, just, we just need to pass the ball a little more. Uh, we only had about six assists this game, I think. So um, that's pretty much what it is. You guys shot 29%, but we're down by one with under a minute left in the game. You guys stayed competitive the whole game. Yeah. How, what does that show about your defense? Uh, you know, we, we got a lot of long athletic guys. Uh, we're a big team this year. So that's something that we knew going into the game was our defense was going to mess them up. Um, in practice, we've been running them off the line. We know their gameplay. Uh, the coaches did a really good job with the scouting report. So it's just about honing in on defense and our size and athleticism. Is there anything from tonight's game that you could look back on positively? 
Of course, like like he said, we was down one point, shooting 29%. That says a lot about our defense, and defense wins games. Unfortunately, we just couldn't pull this one out. But I feel like if we have that same game against a lot of teams, you know, we might come out with the win. And and then on the days that our shots is falling, and we play that same defense, you know, defensive masterpiece, we get some blowouts, you know. On the night when you lose by five, you miss 12 free throws. How much does that sting on a close uh, loss? I'm about to go get some free throws up right now after this game. For real. I mean, after this meeting. Um, it's just disappointing because, you know, they free, free buckets. And at the end of the game, when you look at how many you miss versus what the score is, it's definitely disappointing. Your free throw struggles, well, the team's free throw struggles particularly came in the first half going 5 for 13 then. You guys did improve to 16 of 20 in the second half. What would you say the difference was for you guys between the first half and the second half when it came to getting on the line? Um, just naturally, like the beginning of the game, you know, sometimes you just got to see the bucket go in a little bit. Maybe guys just saw it go in, and then towards the end of the game, they just had their feel going. And, of course, the game means more at the end. So not to say it doesn't mean anything at the beginning, but just naturally you start to try to make more shots and go a little harder at the end there. You guys had a great environment here for the crowd the past two games, but you guys are going on the road back to back. How is it going to be playing on the road after taking a loss in the first game to Kansas State? Um... That's the beauty of the Big 12. It's just another opportunity for us. Uh, but the games aren't going to get easier. So um, starting tomorrow and the next day is next play. Forget about this. When well, I really forget about it, learn from it, and just move on and, and just take advantage of every opportunity given to us. Uh, BYU's coach said he didn't really know what to expect in terms of UCF's atmosphere in the building. He thought maybe it'd be you know, one of the maybe lower tier ones in the Big 12. He said it's the best day of experience, and they just played at Baylor the other night. What can you say about the fans coming back out tonight and kind of the energy that they, they helped you when you made that run? Yeah, UCF uh, always had a good student section, and um, now we're just starting to get more fans rolling in. Uh, excuse me. You know, especially off the, the, the past game we just had, I know students wanted to come out and just repeat that. So that's why it's important that we keep winning games. It's just no more losses because we want to keep the students engaged, keep the fans engaged so that they can keep popping out because they're a big reason why we win sometimes. Just a couple of games now into this Big 12 schedule, but what have you learned about this league so far? It's physical. Um, basketball is just a physical sport, but you know they're not calling calls that you normally would get in other conferences. Um, but I mean, me personally, I'm pretty equipped for that because I played in the um, Pac-12 of Oregon and they're pretty similar as far as that. Um, but yeah, it's just real physical. So it's important in practice that you don't really cry about calls because in the game, you're not going to get them anyway. All good? Yeah. Even though it was a, a tough result, but you guys you know, battled back, had an opportunity in the final minute to win the game. Just what can you say, say about the team's you know, fight and desire to, to come back, to, to have a chance to win it at the end when I think they were leading by, by 13 with about seven minutes to go? Uh, I give them Heard it first. I feel like they had a really good team. They played together. Uh, they did a really good job. Uh, I feel like we got jump from the beginning, and sometimes it's hard. Uh, but we fight through it. We came back like a time, uh, but we got down again. So I feel like we just uh, need to punch them first, uh, so we don't have like to fight back because it's really hard like to play our way. You guys shot 29% from the field tonight. What is going through your mind when the ball is just not going in? What is coach telling you? How are you planning to get some offense going? For me? Um, just the, the, the whole team. Uh, I mean, at the beginning, they were trying to play through me. And But the, the thing is, the other team, they was doubling. So it's really hard like to play uh, when two people guiding you. The thing you can do is just like find your he made and stuff, and sometimes you see your teammates, sometimes you don't. So, you know, when the W is really hard, I like to play like that. That's why I think, like, most of the time, the way it was, it was just kind of weird. So, yeah, I just feel like uh, we need, like, to move the ball. Uh, when I can not score the ball, we need to move to another guy, stuff like that. We just need, like, to move the ball. You had uh, yeah. 19 rebounds tonight, which uh, is the most at UCF since Taco Fall. Just Kind of talk about your ability to be able to rebound the ball tonight. I mean, my offense wasn't going well today, so when I realized that uh, I was missing, I was missing like a lot of shot. Uh, that was trapping me every time. So the only thing I can do, if my if the if that doesn't go well, I have to play like D. 
So I, I was like giving everything there, like rebounding like the ball, passing my teammates so they just can go, yeah. On a night in which you guys lose by five, you miss 12 free throws. How much does that hurt? Yeah, very much. I was just there shooting some more free throws. It's frustrating. Uh, it's very frustrating. I feel like uh, uh, for me, if uh, if I was making the free throws that I miss, we will we could win this game. And you know, like it's really frustrating because we be work on that like every day. And game like that, we miss those free throws. We needed us some easy points. So missing those free throws that I work every day, day and night. It really hurt, so yeah. But we're gonna keep being here, shooting more free throws, and hopefully next time we are gonna be good. You guys had a very poor shooting percentage tonight, free throw as well. But you guys stayed competitive. You guys made it very close at the end, and one basket could have changed the outcome. What does that show about your team's grit and the team's defense to keep you in the game? I mean, the team that we play, they pressure a lot. They pressure everybody, so. Uh, missing free throws, like I mean, everybody, all my teammates, they are really good at shooting like the free throws. Now, uh, but some game, you know, game like this is a lot of pressure, so it's so hard. But we're gonna get it uh, next time. Speaking of next time, you have a road trip to Houston coming up with the Longhorns and the Coo and the Cougars. What do you want this team to take from the from this game and the last game into that road trip against a couple of really good Texas teams? Just know that this league is really hard. It's physical. Uh, you're gonna have to play through foul. Like, don't expect the ref to bail you out. Like, you're gonna play hard. I mean, for me, the thing I learned tonight, like, I need to play harder. Like probably three times harder, so because when we play there, it's gonna be way harder too. Like that team is really good, so we need to go there, give everything, and hopefully we're gonna get a W. You talk about it being more physical. That's on every possession, isn't it? Yep, every possession. Like you cannot take a possession off. Like you have to go hard every time. Like if you take a possession off, like you are dead. Like you have to go harder. Like. You're tired, you have to serve. Like, you have to go harder every time. So that's what we need to do more. Ibrahim, how frustrating is it to walk off this court knowing you probably should have won that game? It's really hurt. Like, I'm really hurt right now. Like, I'm really hurt because uh, this is home. Like, we need to protect home. Like, that's how I take it. You come to my crib, you're trying to do a thing. Like, it's personal. It's personal. And I feel like they come to my house. They punch me in the mouth. I take that to heart. We're going to play them again. So we know that, and we're going to respond. Yeah. Well, I think both teams showed, uh, you know, tremendous grit. I thought both teams defended their hearts out. Uh, they're one of the top defensive teams in the country, and so are we. And I think it played out to, in today's game. Uh, you give them credit. They made a few more plays than we made. And, uh, you know, it was a difference. I thought the young man, Khalifa, was terrific. I think he averaged four points a game. He had 17. He usually averages way more assistant points. Uh, he's a terrific big man, and uh, he played well for them, you know, throughout most of the night. There was a point it looked like BYU might have been starting to pull away, but you guys buckled down. They were leading by 13 with about seven to go. You guys had the furious run to have a chance to win it in the final minute. What can you say about your team's, you know, grittiness on defense just to have a chance to win the game at the end? Well, I think our guys, you know, always give us an opportunity. The one thing I've always said is you, you never see a team at UCF that doesn't play with great energy. And I thought we did again tonight. You know, that gives us a chance because we keep fighting. You know, our guys believe they can, you know, win games. They believe they can come back if they're down. And I think it showed today. And uh, we just, you know, we came up short. You know, like I said, you give them credit for making the plays they had to make uh, to withstand the run that we put on at the end. Get your thoughts on uh, two statistics, six assists. First, that one. Yeah. Uh, not happy. 
uh, in this league, like all leagues, you got to make connecting plays. You got to connect with each other in order to be successful. And that number is, is unacceptable for us. It's just way too low. We have to find guys. We have to hit guys when they're open and play off each other. I think at times, and it comes from a good place, guys want to win and we're going to try to make a play, but it, it, it's not your play, it's our play. You know, it's our play. It's our shot. And I, like I said, our guys have been very unselfish all year, so it wasn't about being selfish. I just think I think when you got behind, we're trying to come back and we, we started pressing. And uh, we can't allow that to happen. We just got to keep chipping away like we've done in some games earlier this season. And on a night in which you lose by five points, you miss 12 free throws. Exactly. I mean, that's, you know, that's something that you know, we spend time on. We work on free throws. Our guys are, you know, take pride in, you know, working on their free throws individually. We, to, we shoot free throws in practice. And uh, we just couldn't hit them today. You know, I was very surprised because that's how you keep momentum. You know, early in the game, we're, we have a lead and we can build. And you go up there and you miss two. You go up there and you go one for two. You go up and you miss two. And you're doing that. All you're doing is giving the other team life. And uh, so we have to do a better job of focusing and concentrating, you know, at the line. And that's just not one player. That's that's all of our guys, to be quite frank. And uh, we've t traditionally been a good free throw shooting team, and this team has some room to grow in that area. Poor free throw shooting, all around shooting was 29%. But you guys were in the game with a minute left with a chance to take the lead and possibly win. What does that say about your team's defense and competitive spirit? Well, we, we always say the same thing. I mean, defense is what travels. You know, your offense can come and go, and tonight we didn't have it. And like I said, a lot of credit them for how they played. But uh, sometimes you don't have it offensively. But it's no excuse that you can't defend with great energy and great effort and, uh, and play within the system that you have. I thought our guys played within that system. They played the right way, you know, defensively. And uh, it gave us a chance to win, and that's what you want. We had multiple possessions where we're down one. You know, we had a couple layup opportunities that we didn't complete. And so those are things that, uh, you know, we were in position, but we got to execute and complete at the end. Uh, 44 rebounds for you guys tonight, 19 of them by uh, Diallo. Just kind of talk, what's your reaction to the team's ability to rebound the ball tonight? Well, I thought we, we did a better job of rebounding the basketball this evening. They're a big team. They're 6'11", 6'11", across the front line, similar to how we can play at times. And I thought our guys really gave a yeoman's effort, you know, on the boards. You know, you know of course, Ibrahima was the guy who had 19, which is remarkable. But but I thought all of our guys, you know, gave great energy, crashed the boards, were trying to be active. And that's kind of part of – that's part of who we are. And so uh, – you know, I was really happy with the effort there on the boards and something we have to continue to, to do as we go forward. BYU, uh, just three of 13 from three in the first half. What's the message at halftime? You know they're, they're going to make some. It's to continue to do what we're doing. I thought that they did a great job of trying to free up some of their shooters. And uh, credit to them. You know, second half they were a little bit better. They got some looks. And for us, you know, we had to stay focused. You know, we, you know, we, we had you know, defended and walked through what they do offensively. I thought we got lost a few times, you know, with their movement. And so we have to do a better job of staying locked in, you know, for the entire possession because they may play a little longer in the possession and you can't afford any time to, to relax. You have to stay engaged the entire time. And because uh, if you don't, they're going to make you pay. Last possession, close to the last possession, Darius Johnson went in for the layup to try to take the lead by one. Um, there was heavy contact, but it missed. Was that the plan? Was was going for a foul the plan, or what was the what was the play right there? Uh, we never really played for the foul. We just want to play, you know, for a strong finish. If we don't have it, we make the kick and just play play basketball the right way, uh, you know. And so he made a good play, and and you know, you know. It's, all those plays aren't going to be called. You know, refs aren't going to make all those calls, and so that's why you got to be strong with the basketball. You know, we played, we shot 33 free throws. You know, so we shot a lot of free throws. So I'm not going. To, you know, I haven't seen that play in particular. I only watched it from my viewpoint on the sideline, so I couldn't see exactly what happened. But uh, you know, he drove it strong, which we like for him to do. And then we just got to make you know whatever play is there, just read and react. If the if the play is to finish, finish. If the play is to kick it, kick it. Coach, for a team that has showcased remarkable depth this season, you ended up you guys ended up coming up with one bench point to today. What what would you say the team the bench did did tonight, and then how would you perhaps improve on that going forward? Uh, we've gotten more production from our bench, you know, both offensively and defensively than we did tonight. But we go game by game. You know, our game plan is, you know, everybody has a game plan when they go in, but you have to make adjustments based on who you're competing against. And we felt, you know, good that we would be able to play some guys, maybe some more extended minutes 
minutes and uh, have our guys out there. And, and we did. And so that's something that we'll go game by game. I'm not stuck where I got to play 10, 11 players in the game. I'm not stuck where I got to play maybe nine. It just always depends on our opponent. And if we think we can keep our guys fresh enough to, uh, to make the plays that, that they can make. And I thought they were fairly fresh uh, and made some plays for us. It's just that the ball just didn't bounce our way, you know, down the stretch. Johnny, how's it feel to walk out of here tonight thinking you probably should have won and now you've lost one in the, at home? Uh, it's, it's tough. I mean, you know, this league is tough. You know, we went to this game with our eyes wide open, knew it was be challenging like they all are going to be. And we need to make sure we played for 40 minutes and try to secure a victory. Uh, unfortunately, we did not. And so what we do is we go back to the drawing board. We start teaching. We start showing our guys, you know, what we could do better. We get in practice. We start working at those things. And then we look to make the improvements because we can. There's a lot of room for growth with our team. You know, it's, there are a number of players that I know can you know give us more production in a lot of areas, and it's just for us just continue pushing them in that in that direction as they get comfortable in big league play. Jalen Sellers didn't really look like himself out there. I know he was coughing, he was favoring his back. Is he struggling with some different things right now, or is he 100%? Uh, definitely not. I mean, he's a little bit you know under the weather, as you could see out there. But he was giving us what he had. You know, that's something that's tough, and and other players are going to face that throughout the season as well. And so. You have to be able to, you know, make sure you're getting your rest, make sure you're getting your treatment. And you can't help if you get sick. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. And so what you want to do is just take care of the things or control the things that you can control. And that's your rest. That's getting treatment by the trainers. And uh, you know, like I said, and then making sure you take the proper medication if something does happen so that you can, you know, give your best effort. You opened the uh, Big 12 schedule on the road. What do you hope your team learned from that? Kansas State jumped out on you quick, and then you're, you're trailing and you're having a fight from behind. Well, atmosphere. I mean, they had an amazing atmosphere on the road. I think that was the first real atmosphere we felt, uh, you know, you know, this year other than the Miami game at Miami, and that was game number two. So we had to go a long stretch without playing a true role game in that type of environment. And I think, you know, it took us a while, man, trying to adjust in that game because of that, and they knocked us back. And so for us, I think what we have to learn is this. We have to be, you know, we have to keep our composure when we're on the road. I thought I didn't think we kept it, you know, versus K-State. We have to stay composed. They're going to make runs. The crowd's going to get into it. And we have to be able to withstand those runs and, and keep playing UCF basketball. And I didn't think we did that at K-State. I think we can be better uh, now that we've uh, faced that type of uh, environment going forward. Coach, it needs to be asked. The big news that Mikey Williams committed to UCF yesterday shocked the college basketball world. Uh, any word on that and any eligibility updates? Uh, you know, I can't comment on, you know, recruits in that, that regard. That's an NCAA violation for us. And so, you know, I would love to when that time comes to make a comment, but right now that's not possible. What do you – you got two big road games coming up in Texas against Texas and Houston. What are you hoping to see out of the team in those two games? I hope to see us, you know, perform at a higher level, you know, on both sides of the ball. I mean, I thought we defended really well, but I think we could have defended better. You know, we had some slippage. We had some broken plays that we have to clean up, understand how important every possession is. And then offensively, the same thing. You know, I look at our assist number, you know, it's not good enough. We have to do a better job of connecting with each other. This, this may be a season low in assists if it's not, it's right around there for us in making the connecting plays with one another. We have to make sure the ball is moving. We have to make sure we're moving our bodies more so it doesn't get as stagnant. You know, those are things that I'm looking at, and I'll see more on tape as we go forward. Coach, what can you have to say about Night Nation showing up for these past two games, another over 9,000 crowd, and now we have this whole Fear, the, fear the Fraud movement going on? Well, you know, I love, I love our community. They've rallied around us. You know, I love our, our student section. They've been terrific. They've always been with us. And so uh, just really happy for that, to see the environment at UCF and Addition Arena the way it can be. And I think that you can see the possibilities. And you can see how our players respond to that. You know, we didn't put our best foot forward tonight. Like I said, I'll give BYU the credit for that uh, because they're, like I said, outstanding defensive team as well. And, uh, but for us, you know, I, I, I see – you know, a lot of potential in what we can do here with our team and with our community and with our fan base. All right, guys, take care. Thank you.